Timama, you won't be a great deal. Yeah, good evening, whoever you're watching at home. Uh, it's very, uh, it's a very beautiful Friday in Lusaka. And on Hill Conversations, I'm joined by Madam Laura Mitty, uh, who happens to be the Executive Director for Alliance for Community Action. Uh, so in, uh, in this edition of uh, this program, she'll be talking to us about inequality from her perspective. And obviously, uh, share more of what we can do as a people and how inequality affects us as a nation. And uh, without wasting much of the time, I'll ask Madam Laura Mitty to make a presentation for about 20 minutes. And after that, then I'll be ask, I'll asking our questions. And then I also will come questions from our viewers, from wherever you are, from whatever platform you're watching us from. So I'll be able to collect your questions and forward them to her. And then she'll be responding. So, Madam Laura Mitty, uh, the time is now. You can you. Greet, greet our viewers and proceed into your uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Pilato, and good evening, uh, everyone. So, I've been asked to speak about what inequality means to me. I would say that I think inequality is unequal access to that which we, we are meant to all equally. So when I think about inequality, it is that which belongs to the public, that which belongs to all citizens, if we have unequal access to it, then we have a state of inequality. Mm. So considering what um, th this topic, um, I concluded that in Zambia, Inequality is determined by the fact that we have unequal access to public money, to public resources. And when we talk about public money, public money is the simplest way of looking at it. But when we talk about public money, where does public money come from? It comes from the resources that we own together. So, for example, we own the copper, which is our main export, together. We own the Victoria Falls together. We own the debt together, the loans that come to here from here together. They are not owned by any single individual. They are not owned by the party in power or the individual who is the president. And if you want proof of that, you just have to think that when we have an election and we change governments, whether when we brought in Chuluba down to the time when we brought in President Lungu, or the MPs or the councillors, the people who manage this public money, when they come into office, they do not come in carrying a sack of money. They do on the day of the inauguration, at the end of the election, we don't see them dragging this this lot of money through which they will run the country. They find the money. The money is owned by all of us. Their role is to manage this money in such a way that we have equal access to it. But especially, my sense is that public money or public resources are meant to equalize us. 
They are meant to make sure that those at the bottom of the, of the food chain, those that are the poorest and the weakest among us can be lifted and supported in order to meet uh, a basically dignified life. The problem we are sitting with in Zambia is that the public money, the public good, that which you own together, is accessed by a very small number of people. It improves the lives of a very small number of people. The majority Zambians, especially those who live in rural areas, might as well have no government. So if a young child is born in Chadiza, Mufumbwe, uh, deep somewhere uh, in uh, Western province, Southern province, I mean deep rural, essentially they have no government because they get their water from the river. The, school, the, the closest school is very far from it. Essentially, if government were to disappear from, from those communities, it would be almost like the Holy Spirit disappearing from most Christians' lives. Nobody would know. It would take a long time for anybody to bat an eyelid because it is, it's academic. If government disappeared for those of us who are closer to power, closer to town, maybe because you see the, the, the school we go to uh, is government, we, we, we have government water coming out of essentially, which is a service provided by a quasi government organization. So we have, if you're in Saka, you have Lusaka water. Uh, if you're in Kabo, you've got Lukanga water. So you have this closeness to power, to, to, to government. You have got Zesco, you have got all these things. So th 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 there is something that's called government in your life. What I find very disturbing is this. That money that is owned by all of us is managed in such a way, especially now, that in order to access it, in order to access uh, the benefit of it, increasingly, you have to be connected to those in power. You have to be connected. Like right now, if you are not somehow connected to the PF, for example, the ruling party, mm. the extent to which you have the benefit of this, that is the public good, is reduced. Mm. But let's, let's if, you, if you're to remove the politics of it and just talk about services as services, this is where we have a problem. Let's look at the, maybe the two most important sectors to a human being uh, in this modern era. The first is education. I think when it comes to education, this is something I've spoken about before, and, and it is, I think, the most uh, painful inequality in this country for me. Education is the biggest equalizing force in a country. If a child is born in a township, uh, Chazanga in Lusaka, which is one of the poorest areas, or Maziopa in Lusaka, which is, which is one of the poorest areas, this child, if their parents their grandparents and their grand and their great grandparents. If nobody in that family had ever even entered the classroom, nobody, they come from a, a, a line of illiteracy. There's not one of them that can write A, B, or C. If I if you take that child and put them in a classroom and keep them in a classroom for, for 12 years, you will have changed that whole line. So mm. education will equalize them just by the fact that they'll, that they'll have learned how to read and write, and possibly if they go on and get a, a trade or get a degree, it's over. Their, their life has changed. So education is an equalizing force. We all know that. And yet, in Zambia, the way education is run is such that if you are poor, it is stacked up against you. So what happens if you're an educated, if, if you're an uneducated, poor, poor person in Zambia. Your child goes to a school in which they sit a hundred to a class, in some areas, 120 to a class. 80, 60, that's a very small class across the country. Okay. So let's say, let's take it, let's average out. You go to grade one, there's a hundred of you in the classroom. The teacher comes when they please, but between grade one and grade seven, chances are that you'll have missed a whole year of school through just normal absences from your teacher. Mm. There, are, there are schools with no ablution books, no, no books. This child 
is sitting in class, is being under taught, sometimes is in a school with no electricity, and everything is stacked against them. They reach grade five, unable to read, not because they have a learning disability, simply because how are you going to learn in a class of 100? Yes, if you're sitting in, in the middle of that class, you're sitting in the middle of a crusade. That's not a classroom, okay? So reading is like walking. Reading is like riding a bicycle. It, you do not need to be intelligent to read. As long as someone teaches you, you will learn how to read. As long as someone teaches you, you will learn how to ride a bicycle, to drive. You don't, there's no intelligence to it. So the fact that majority of our children, maybe 40% of our grade fives are unable to read is because the government schooling system is broken. So this is one child. This child then goes all the way to grade seven. At grade seven level, they write the same exam with your child, uh, Pilato, and my child, and the child of ministers going to this private schools and these fancy schools. In those fancy schools, there is 30 of them to a class. They never ever miss a teacher from grade one to grade seven. They've got books, they've got teachers, they've got everything. Now, if they write the same exam and get the same so-called pass mark, it's not even a pass mark because what we've done with our education system is that because governments, subsequent governments have not built enough schools, we have to cut off 70% of the children who start grade one before they reach grade 12. We cut them off. So it's a cut them off at grade seven and cut them off at grade, at grade nine. They don't fail. We just cut them off. So we use this cut marks, 600 uh, at grade seven, which is 60%. 60% is not a pass mark. Pass mark is 40%. So our grade seven pass mark should be 400, but we can't give 400. So who do we cut off? We cut off those poor kids. Because when they come to write this same exam with the kids who are better resourced, they, they, they cannot compete even if these are the geniuses. Mm. So education, therefore, means, it means that in Zambia, if you are born poor, you have to be beyond genius to make it to grade 12. So ask yourself this question. How many middle-class children have you seen who've not reached grade 12? I know nobody. I, in my circle, I do not know a single child who has not reached grade 12. My friends and my relatives. Not one. Okay, I, so I don't know a child who lives in Kablonga who's near, who has not reached grade 12. Mm. Does it mean that if you're born in Kablonga, you're smart? How is it that the children in Kablonga are all reaching grade 12? Why are all the children in Northmead reaching grade 12 in Riverside? You know, why are all in Itawa? While the children in Kamito, Ndo, Kanyama, in, in Mwense are not reaching grade 12. What is it? Because there's no such thing as if you're born in a rural area, you're dull. It is the fact that we are unable to use education to give that which is basic, a classroom with 40 children, desk teacher. Where is the money that could build the schools going? Right now I can tell you, the money that could have built the schools to take the child out of Kanyama into school has just bought massive, massive weaponry. It has bought weapons. Minister Kampiongo has bought weapons whose job is to break bones, ribs, kill ordinary citizens. In a country that's peaceful, billions of dollars that could have built the schools, bought the desks, employed the teachers, so that we can equalize this country. So now I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why that I think that's a problem. We are the only country in this region that has this cut off grade seven and grade nine. Take Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, which is a, we believe is a much more broken country than we are right now. In Zimbabwe, every child who starts grade one can reach grade 12. The only difference is the, the smarter kids or maybe the, the better resource kids who go to the Fatimas, Roma girls, uh, Mopadi schools, you know, they'll go to the better schools, but there'll be a school for every child. What that means is if you look at Zimbabweans, wherever they land, even here in this country, wherever they land, they are articulate, they can write. They've taken over South Africa. The South African economy would shut down if every Zimbabwean left. So when their country broke down, when they left that country, they left with a certificate. We are making sure that we, well, this country, which is actually now broken, 
our majority young people cannot make it out of their poverty because they can't read, they can't reason, their country has denied them an education. Let's take health. Or maybe before I go to health, I'll talk about roads and major inequality. The public money that is meant to ensure that every Zambian has a basic road. Remember, when I talk about like even schools, I'm not saying that government must build fancy schools and buy everybody iPads. I'm saying basic cement, roof, teacher, blackboard, book. That's all we are saying. Then you and I can take our children to the fancy schools. And the difference is accents, but everyone will be able to read. Roads. Right now in Lusaka, we are using public money to build I'm an upstairs road. In Lusaka, if you are if you are a cadre in Lusaka, you can get a road in your thing, a, a road of 20 meters, 50 meters start. It's going nowhere. But if you know whoever is tiring these roads, if you know President Lungu, if you're connected to the PF, we are tiring roads going nowhere in Lusaka. We are making four lane roads. Nice. I live in Lusaka. I won't complain. It's really nice to drive on these roads, but they are unequal. They are unjust. Because if you go to Southern province, Northern province, Copper Belt, anywhere, talk to people. Their cry is feeder roads. I'm not even talking about the roads in the towns. Feeder roads. People are able to bring their produce from where they farm to town. They are unable. Mothers give birth on the side of a broken bridge. This bridge would cost 10,000 kwacha to fix, but it was last fixed by Kaunda. A road was last graded by Kaunda. The, you'll be amazed at what people in the rural areas cry for. They're not asking for tarred road. They're asking for a grader. Pilato, grader. Grader. Mm. Fewer only grader. <laughs> it's what the majority Zambians are asking for. Just grade our roads. No, we don't grade them. We go and tar these roads going nowhere in Osaka. It's, an, it's wrong because the person who owns the copper but we, by which we grade those roads, is a lumber child. Aka Fiminaso, Aka Manga, is the one who was born on top of that copper. Ya kwe kopa They have equal claim, equal access. That copper should grade that child's feeder road, should build them a school. You have children. We talk about early marriages. Why do we have uh, early marriages? Why? Is your child not going to marry early? My child not going to marry early? Why are children in Kablonga not marrying early or in Riverside? Why? It's because we can feed them. We have schools. You see, so we, we, we talk about symptoms instead of dealing with the simple fact that those in power are taking public money they, for health care. If you go to a clinic and you are poor, you probably die. Your child will die for lack of ORS. The lack, lack of coatum, lack of the basic drugs. Meanwhile, the public money bought from the copper, owned by the Kalaka Mula and Bakalaka Mwanakagia, you know, is the owner of Luangwa National Park. Some child in uh, Livingston is the owner of Victoria Falls. Now, if, if we were to break, if we were to break this country up, they take that money, they jump on planes for their health care, they go abroad. There is nothing wrong with going abroad if you're a minister. If in Zambia, you've left Kowatam, you've left Parado, you've left a nurse for every Zambian because we jointly own the resources. So when those in power began, begin to use their own money, I don't mean stolen money. I'm not telling you this money which people show off and say, oh, if, if we, we are clever to live, ah, 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 not that money. The money they themselves have actually earned. No one will complain. If this is the money you inherited from your father and your father and your father, no one will complain. I'm talking about public money, taxpayer money, the money that comes out of toll gates, which we pay. That money put together should equalize us. And right now, it is not equalizing us. I'll stop there. My 20 minutes are up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. I was uh, I was busy checking your time, but obviously I knew you promised that you'd be below the 20 minutes. Thank you very much. So maybe uh, I'll just sharing a thought and then I'll ask you a question. 
Could it be, have you noticed that in Zambia, especially in Lusaka, Copa Belt, and probably some parts of uh, southern province, where the taxpayers, if I pay my taxes, I hire my private security, I go to a private clinic, I send my children to a private school, everything, everything is almost private for me. Could it be the reason why people do not care how these resources are distributed? I don't think so, so. I think they genuinely don't know. You see, very few people think about it this way. That just that simple fact that President Lungu didn't come with money. So President Lungu can't bring development. How? Mm. <laughs> you see what I mean? The person mm. doesn't have money. Mr. Kampiongo doesn't have money. Lusambo doesn't have money. The MP doesn't have money. Whoever we put in power, Chiluva didn't have money. Kaunda didn't have his own money. This is our money. But we've been convinced somehow that when we put someone in power, they own money. So MPs can go and like right now, MPs are going around the country saying, oh, in the tyranny, this, I'll bring you, I'll dig a well. From where? It's not your money. You're going to take our money and dig a well. See, so what I usually say to people is this. If, 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 I, if someone gives me a loaf of bread and I bring it to you, and I say, someone says, go and give this loaf of bread to Pilato. If you don't know this loaf of bread is yours, that one to me, and I take two slices of that bread and I give them to you, you will thank me, you will bless me, you will become a papa, you will pray for me because mm. I've been very generous. And I go away with 14 slices, which are yours. That's the situation in Zambia, that most people really don't think about the extent to which this money is ours. Which is why we should be very angry with Kampiongo right now. He has no right to do what he's done. He has no right to buy all that armory to come and break our bones. And yet we have no schools. We have no medicines in hospital. But you see, if we understood, even those of us who talk about going to private uh, 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 facilities, ultimately there comes the day you can't build your own road. And when you get sick, properly sick, not sick, you go to UTH. Private hospitals do not want dead bodies in their, in their hospitals. So at the door, they say no. And I'm talking about COVID. Even before COVID, they do not let you die in private hospitals. There comes a day you need government. But if, you know, well, I, I'm always amused about the middle classes who think everything is fine. You, look. You can take your child to a private school, but if the majority, if of, of every 10 children, three are going to private school and seven are in government are in, are in broken government schools, they can't read, they generally can't spell, they uh they they are they, they are really being messed up by the school system. That will be the Zambia your children will live in. What the majority do is say. What the minority do is mad. Our children will be the mad ones. You see what I mean? So mm -hmm. our children, these children that we are raising will be very unhappy because they, they, their, their peers are being left behind. So you cannot, a small group of people cannot expect that they will move the country forward. So that's uh, what I would say. About. Okay, so Katima Murilo is asking, what is the end game to this inequality? I would say usually the end game of the inequality is that the poor come after the rich. For sure. You know, it, it, there comes a point at which the poor come up at, and it's already happening. Yeah. You see, the reason why we have cadres who carry guns who can who can um hack someone they do not know but i'm to what it's not because they are bad people it's because they are no jobs or they are under educated so now we are more fearful we need more higher walls than we needed under kaunda when the country was equal the more equal the country the less crime the more equal the country, the less in, the, the less vices in the country. So inequality always comes to eat up those who are pushing it. You should ask the French. 
Uh, Michael Zulu, I think I was I had a chat with Michael Zulu sometimes back, and then he said uh, he said something very interesting. He said the the rich people must be concerned because one day the poor people have nothing to eat, but the rich people. So the <laughs> the people have nothing to eat, but to eat uh, the, the 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 rich, rich. people have nothing to eat. So which is uh, which is uh, something that you are speaking to. Uh, what would you what would you what would, would you ask the public to do what what is it because inequality is a danger like you've rightly put it apart from what you do as an activist as uh, SCA what would you recommend those that are watching to to do in addressing this inequality in Zambia before it gets to level where we cannot even mitigate it. Understand that it's not normal. You know, this story that the Bible says the poor you have with you always is not the way a country is meant to be run. We are, when we say equality, we're not saying everybody should have chicken. No. Neither are we talking about what people can do with their own energy, with their own money. But we are saying that we, with public money, Everybody should have a basic road, basic school, basic healthcare. That which is reflects the money being which the government has. Right now, you have a situation, and I keep saying this, Mr. Kampiongo, even if he's not here, God in heaven is going to punish him for those things he's bought. It's not yeah. even what they're going to be used for. It's what... It's who's going to die. Someone is going to die in a hospital with no medicine because Mr. Gampiongo chose to buy armory. Some mm. child is going to end up uneducated because Mr. Gampiongo took millions of dollars that could have built a school and bought stuff so that he, 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 you know, so that he could bully us into silence. Mm. So of all the injustice that has ever happened in this country, Mr. Gampiongo has something to pay for. Is and I, of, for, of investing, the people, for investing in weapons when people are not, uh, for investing and, in weapons when people are not in school, where there are no, you know, there are no basic bridges, there are parts of this country that are cut off for two months at the height of the rain season. You know, you in this country, you could grade every grader road from one fire truck if you took out corruption. If you decide that the million dollars is going to go to the grading of the roads, nobody is going to put money in their pocket. You get a grader. You can. Those fire trucks would have graded every road, but you don't. So the, what I'll say to people is, first of all, understand that this is not normal. It's not old normal. It's not new normal. It's not anything. This is not how things are supposed to be. Uh Frank Berry says, I think our culture plays a big role. I don't know to what extent do you agree or disagree with what uh, Frank Berry and Fra Frank Berry is watching us on uh, Periscope and Twitter. So he's saying, I think our culture plays a big role. To what extent do you agree, disagree with this? Totally disagree. You see, our culture promotes the support of the weakest. That's why in our culture, the one Yama who got rich was never able to buy that big Benz because must must rise raise everybody below them. If you remember, in our culture, you could not have someone go to bed without eating. Someone in the village would give them food. So in our culture, yes, the chief, the big man or whatever would live well, but we looked out for the weak. The inequality I'm talking about now is we forget the weak. We treat with the, the poor as though it's their fault and as though they deserve this. You know, we have, we have this small clique in Zambia of the middle classes who think they are inherently better. Their blood flows, Katushi blood to a quarter. You know, it's, it's a better blood. So we, we, we look down on the poor. We don't care. As long as we, you know, we have had, our culture, the new culture has become very selfish. Our culture as Zambians is not selfish. Well, our African culture is not, is not this kind of selfish. You could never mm -hmm. see someone else uh, die of hunger. In fact, in our culture, anybody coming from your village, you'd, you'd look back and try and lift. 
That is how you remember even those who came to the Copa Belt Academy. They would go back and say, what Malayama, who, who, who. Yes, you yes. see, you see. And that's how we've had whole, yes, whole families moving in. So we can't blame our culture, no. Uh, Nelson Nyato, Nelson Nyato sa, says, could it be that the government is doing an experiment to see the behavior of its people by these inequalities? They are displaying us to know how they will finally wipe us away. I don't think our government, okay, sorry, I don't think our government particularly thinks things through, with all due respect. I don't, I don't, I don't think they go, I don't give them the credit of thinking they go very far and say, maybe this, maybe this. They're just greedy. You know, greed doesn't think. It, you, you, you have all these people trying to be millionaires. It's impossible. You can't all be millionaires and there's money left over for the people at the bottom. So Lusambo wants 20... Uh, what's this? CCTVs in his house. They want, they, they want to own, you know, like this one was so, so millions. This one was so, so millions. So they are driven by greed. You know, the people in this government, I don't think they're actually evil. You know, if they're, if they're evil, they're a dictator. Bambi. They're just greedy. You know, like they, they, they seem to think there's the, the government pot is uh, bottomless. So when they came into power in 2011, remember that PF didn't really think they would win. So they were not really ready to run a government. So in their minds, they actually believed in PF government that you poor, got a big bus, you know, big bus sees Zula. That's, the, that's, that's the, culture, the, the culture they had. So when they began to empty the treasury, mm. by the time they realized that this treasury can actually be emptied, it was too late. But I would not, I do, I do not think they think too far, and which is now there's this sense of panic. Now you begin to to throw thirty million at the young people. You can't this four fifty million here. Government must systematically, structurally allow a child sitting in their own home to see the path out of their poverty. I will go to school, I will study, and I will pass, and I'll go to university. I should not, the president should not be giving out money to individuals. That is not what we talk about equalizing. Equalizing is not money. Equalizing is systems. Equalizing is through services. It's through schools. It's through healthcare. It's through roads. It is uh, through water. That's how you equalize. You see? So the mm. problem like now, you see, if you build a, an airport in Lusaka that you don't need, that is how a country becomes an eco. You do not need that Lusaka airport. Yes, it's a nice to have, but where could that money have gone in the transport sector within this country? And this country still run. That we, we, we could have changed the lives of millions. So the answer again is I doubt that they've thought this through. Uh, ranchos, there's Chan Chags. The second says, how do you think we can root out this rotten system? I don't know which system he's talking about. I'm not sure think... which system. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take it as inequality. I think yes. inequality, I think the poor should know. We should teach the poor that the money is theirs. Once that mindset changes, I'm telling you they're coming after us. You see, mm. because as it is, we seem to think that those who have power, those we have given the duty and the privilege to manage resources are doing favors for the poor when actually they are managing money for the poor. It's the, it, the money belongs to everybody. So as soon as we let the ordinary people understand, you know what I mean? This is your money. You should demand basic water. This and basic water is not a tap in your house. Basic water is you, you, you can you walk only so far. You find even if it's a hand pump, even if it's a well, you don't stand, you don't stand, spend five hours there looking for water. So when we talk about government money equalizing, we should be accused of thinking that government is this, is the American government. We are saying the money that this country owns from our copper, our bukula, our weather, our total resources, we can give every Zambian. 25 liters of water, 500 meters from their house, that we can manage. We can give every Zambian a gravel road that is well 
graded so that they don't spend five hours for a 45 minutes trip. Zambians need to understand that it's not okay. The poor, I don't think this is about talking about the rich or the powerful. The powerful will respond to the poor. So we need to tell the youth, the young people, the young people should not be lied to. That when the when the president gives you money, to work, the president has given you money. The president has taken your money and tried to bribe you into silence, so that you one person has been given a bit of money. Open a container. What about that one in the village? Where what, how would they have a portion of this money? With their six points, one of the um one of the projects we had as ACA, we went mm -hmm. um around to Muchinga, I think it was to Muchinga, and we were, we just wanted to find out the extent to which youth facilities reach the, the, the rural areas. We yeah. found young people with six points deep in the village, unable to access a scholarship to come to Unza. Who, who gets the loans? You see, if you want to talk about equality, just look on one day, go and do an audit of who gets the loans at Unza and CBU, who gets the rooms. The people who get the rooms, the father lives in Riverside, but has a room. The father yeah. lives in Kabundu, but has a room and has 100% bursary. And yet comes from home with 5,000 kwacha. So when you're talking about equality, you're talking about uh, the young people, for example, it is them understanding again that this should not be accepted. We are not a poor country. We just have a country full of poor people. So we have a, a very rich country. If we manage this country, we are we are like a family whose father and mother own 20,000 20, kwacha a month, but I not have to school. You see, that, that is how this country is. The resources are there. They're just wasted and stolen or mismanaged. Mm. So there is uh, there's a question from uh, Gift Chancer. Gift Chancer is asking, is there a system how money should be distributed to the community, e.g. CDF, and how can we take part in that? And how do we know when it is distributed? CDF is supposed to uh, arrive in the communities once every year, 1.6 billion per constituency, and that money is supposed to go down to the WDC. Now, I'm glad that question has been asked. You know, there's a structure called the World Development Committee in this country. It's the lowest structure of governance. You know, what I find amazing is that in our system, no money is managed at that level. The WDCs are at the mercy of the councils, at the mercy of the, the, the councillors. No money reaches the actual community. You know that if you gave each word, even 50,000, just 50,000, especially the rural communities, they would think that that government is made up of angels. So we don't have a resource that's managed right at the local level. But the CDF is a very good resource. You should ask yourself, if 1.6 million is going to every constituency, where does it go? You're seeing bus stops that are half finished, schools that are half finished. It's, it's, it's not usual that you see a completed project. And the project do not prioritize the most important needs. These bridges we're talking about, which are there forever. Somehow the MPs come and bulldoze and choose these projects that do not matter to the people. So it's very important that ordinary citizens understand, like now CDF has gone to every community. Follow up. There's a CDF committee, go to your council, find out which projects they're going to take that money to. It's, ex it's, it's extremely important for that to happen. Uh, Daddy Sokasonde. Daddy Sokasonde says, how do we get Zambians to be less fearful about honestly engaging our leaders on poor service delivery and misappropriation of our money? How do you engage? How do we get Zambians to be less fearful about honestly engaging our leaders on poor services, free service delivery and misappropriation of our money? Fear is a difficult thing. Um, the, PF, the PF government has systematically planned how to make Zambians fearful. You know, like, again, Kapiongo buying those things is teaching <laughs> Zambians fear. 
But I would say that Zambians need to understand that we own this country. We own this country. There is no government that owns this country. And also, you are going to be scared until when? I once said that if you're sitting in a and this car is being driven by your uncle, who's a bully, you can see him driving, he's drunk, he's driving and he's speeding, he's going over the cliff, Kamanenekela. If you don't stop him, you go over the cliff. How does fear help you? Because you're scared of the, the uncle. You know, this uncle is going to be a car, but you're sitting in the car and he's driving it off the Kamanenekela. Tell me how fear helps you. That's Zambia. Let's be fearful. But our country is being driven off the cliff. We'll go off the cliff. Then we can be, be nice and fearful off the cliff. Uh, so there is uh, Chama Joseph. Chama Joseph disagrees with you. He says, or he or she says, Joseph, he says, Madam Laura, education is not the only way out of poverty. We have to broaden our perspective. Government must also challenge to create opportunities beyond giving money, look beyond the visible. Uh, I don't know how, if they're disagreeing, but they sound disagreeing, and then they also sound like they're agreeing with you. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to see how a child who's never been to school in this era becomes a useful citizen. So when we talk about education, basic education is up to grade 12. We're not even talking about degrees. We are failing our children at grade three and grade four. Our children are coming out of grade seven and able to write their names and able to read. So if you cannot read, you can't, be, you can't participate in this program. You can't send a WhatsApp. You can't, you can't when you're a cross-border trader, someone else must fill your form. You can't apply for a passport. Education is a basic right. Saying someone should not get an education is like saying a child must never learn to walk or to crawl. They must just sit there. So when you talk about education, do not think of it as saying we should all be doctors. No. Yes, but we do need the doctors. Never look down on education. It's important. So we don't need the doctors. We need the professors. We need the thinkers. But our edu our population should be able should be literate. We are an illiterate population. The young uh, people between 18 to 25 can hardly spell to save their lives. So when we look at ourselves in the region, our children are the ones who fail their math, who fail, especially at primary school, those in government schools. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about equalizing. Joe Maji Mubanga asks, how can we have the accessibility to our resources, especially the poor, because mainly they are the ones who are, they one uh, have the accessibility to these, are the one who have connections to the government system and the rich. So Joe is asking, how can we have accessibility, especially the poor, how can they have access to these uh, resources that you've talked about uh, being collective, collectively owned? Unfortunately, we shouldn't, you know, if in a functional country, we shouldn't even be asking this. You know, like the very system, the budgeting system, when government goes to budget, the money should be going to ensure that it reaches the services for the poor. It, you know, it, that's how the money should be distributed. There should be no money for tanks because Campiongo has a big ego. There should be no such money. Tell Mr. Campiongo, I say so. I'm very upset with Mr. Campiongo. He's even showing off saying only criminals will be upset. Why do we need a, a water cannon? A what? Why? Why, Mr. Campiongo? Why? Mr. Lungu, why do we need that armory? So in a country that is run properly, the budget, it should be impossible to buy those things. My heart breaks. It should be impossible. There's no, people are starving right now. They're starving under COVID, but we've got money to buy armory and even show it off, Kanganja, those guys. And the police officers being given those things are being cowards. They don't need, you know, they've, they've, been, they've been totally humiliated. You want to give Zambians that stuff? 
to kill other Zambians. Why? It's what become Piongo driving those things. So mm -hmm. the system should be such that through the budgeting system, the money should automatically go to the basic services, water, health, education for the poor. The ranchers, okay, ranchers has come again. Ranchers says, how do we bring equality when the very people who are char charged with making sure resources are shared are the ones in the forefront of looting and perpetrating inequality? How do we bring equality when the very people who are charged with making sure that resources are shared are the ones in the forefront of looting and perpetrating uh, inequality? We are the bosses. We are the ones who put these people in office. We need to teach those people in power to fear us. Mm. Is it, did, you, did you notice how the young people spoke just a little bit and they all began to dance? They know. We mm. are the ones who hold the vote. You see, like right now, Zambians are talking about, hey, change government, change government. I keep saying, we can change government all we want. If Zambians don't teach politicians to fear us, even the next government will be the same. So we mm. need to take the power back. We need to take the power back. Those in power need to remember they serve at the pleasure of the people. You know, like, how can you have someone like Boma Lusabo? You know, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Minister <laughs> of Lusabo, he, he, he is so disrespectful of ordinary citizens. You know, like, he just doesn't care. The reason for that is that completely forgotten that their role is to manage resources on behalf of the people. I keep asking the president, how did the ministers get this rich? How? Miracle money? How? Because just basic, normal work. There is no business that is not the lottery that makes you so rich in five years. It's either but, an inheritance. You know, if they put the money together, I swear, Boma Lusambo cannot justify the money he owns. But you see, the problem is that money, someone in Kawushi right now is going to be illiterate because their parents cannot afford to take them to school. Someone is going to die because there's no ORS. ORS here too, Kwacha. He's a clinic. There's no Kowata. That is what we should be saying. So when we look at these people getting rich, don't think of them as anyway they're getting rich. No, the person who is right now, there are some very clever Kaponyas who mm. only rich for seven simply because someone did not build the school. The school, the money for their school is building a minister's house right now. Now it is the seventh and eighth house. What kind of sleep do they have? Probably they need 10 houses, one person. You see, so it has gone beyond just needing to get out of poverty to total accumulation. One ton accumulation. It is, again, the majority Zambians, those ones we see sitting there looking hungry, tired, they are the ones who own the money. Whatever else you forget, remember that Lamba child with a funny name like Kaviki. That child is the one who owes the copper. They are, her ancestors are buried in the copper, and yet she's illiterate, so that Minister Lusambo can have 12, 12 CCTV cameras. It's unacceptable. They are 16, not 12. <laughs> <laughs> there is a question coming from uh, Musonda Mwewa. Are you saying nationalization is the only solution to this inequality? If so, how many political players recognize this fact and are, are well prepared to implement such a policy? No, you don't need nationalization. You need the resources that are available to be managed in such a way that they are being distributed to the services. Even if you nationalize, but the money goes to buy Campiongo's toys, What's the difference? You see, so it's not because we have not nationalized that Campiongo had money to buy those 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 uh, toys, those things for bullying us that is bought. You see, 
which he says himself. They even come from their officers, Kapio Kankaji, whatever, to go and show us the people. Do you know what kind of arrogance that is? Mm. You, you don't need nationalization to end arrogance. You just need to understand who owns this money. When President Nungu came to office, he was not dragging a sack of money. When President Malawasa came to office, President Sata, President Chua, they were not dragging sacks of money. The money is ours. They find it there. They manage it for us. They are like treasurers. We need to understand that. Uh, C5, that, that, Kangani, that, and that is saying, on this topic, I think you people must check out what living in Kanyama has become. It's killing after killing. These junkies have taken over. Being a junkie is culture here. We are hardworking youths. We, we hardworking youths are victims. When going for work around five, they beat you even as we knock off Kuma 19. We are attacked. Please, it's your help. Help us here in Kanyama Central to Allah Pwa. That's a very good topic. You know, um, there's a time again when we were talking to women and asking them to just, we're just talking about uh, uh, service delivery. And one of the issues they kept talking about, this time it was in the Munali constituency. It was about the same issues. Junkies, junkies, junkies. Livingstone as well is a big issue of junkies. You know what? No child is born saying, Inenga Nakula, I want to be a junkie. When I grow up, I want to be a kada. I'll be taking a panga and beating and, and hacking people I don't know. Junkies are a direct result of a society that does not provide services. Those junkies, you look at them. There's in Kanyama, there are not enough secondary schools. Everywhere, there's there's not enough schools, not enough food, not enough water, not enough any of these things. If the services were such that a young child could be kept in school with the systems, with sport. Our government schools, now they even build them in such a way that there's not even a pitch. Sport mm. keeps kids in school. Art, you know, these days when you talk about art, it's even as if you're talking about wasting money. In the government schools, no sport, no art, no, no teachers, no lab, no this. And then it is expensive to keep the children in school. So they drop out. The junkies are the children of the poor. They are eating up the poor. They are beating up their mothers and fathers. You know, like I said one time, Ikanda said to me, when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm sober, I can never beat up someone. Never. But these same people at the top, they buy us the beer, they buy us the drugs, and they tell us, go and beat that person. They don't take their children. Who will not be in that truck to kill someone? He won't be. It will be a policeman who is scared of his job, for his job. So before we go back to this question, the people in Kanyama, it is a big, big problem. That is where the money, for example, that which Kampiongo billions wasted on those uh, amali. It should have gone to Kanyama, isn't it? Mm. To, to, to create uh, law and order, a police station. Arm, do, do, not, do not arm the police to harm citizens. Train them, give them the facilities to stop drugs. So just, it's these leakages that we are not making. We are buying armory so that someone can stay in power. Wow, the people they want to stay in power over uh, 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 killing each other like they are saying in Kanyama. Unacceptable. Uh, Jay Sheshe says, do you think democracy is doing us any justice or should we go back to our old system before the colonizer came to Africa? That's a monarchy government. Every European country that took part in colonization still kept their monarchy government systems. I don't think it's about uh, democracy. It's not democracy that has failed. It is we, the people, the ordinary people that have allowed those who are in power to think they are kings. Is this a democracy? It's a monarchy. President <laughs> Lungu is a king. You know what I mean? If this was a democracy, this is not a democracy. Mm. 
See, uh, if it was a democracy, democracy, that would not have happened. So, uh, Ka Daddy So Kasonde comes back again and she asks, how does the passing of Bill 10 affect the fight inequality, fight, fighting inequality in Zambia? Bill 10 is designed to make those in power answer no questions, simply. So, we, you know, you, you are right now, see, the same people who've destroyed this country want to be able to do whatever they like. Kill democracy, borrow money as they please, bring back deputy minister. So Bill 10 is designed to ensure that those who are already greedy, have already uh, taken so much of our money, can do it now constitutionally. So all these things that you're seeing, Bill 10, is so that they can be done constitutionally. We have nowhere to go. You can't go to court to say this has happened because it's now in the constitution. You see, they can borrow without reporting to anybody. They can have as many deputy ministers and ministers as they want. They can, services cannot be because the constitution allows it. So if we talk about Bill 10, Bill 10 is meant to constitutionalize injustice and, and lack of democracy. Simoi Ngundi says inequality promotes inferiority complex. 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 Uh, complex. Uh, inferiority, inferiority complex or complex. The poor feel very inferior to come up very open to express their rights. I don't know to what extent you agree or disagree with that. Uh, uh, contribution from Simoy. I would say that you create a situation. You see, in a situation where anybody finds it impossible to speak, it's because the, the, that is a culture that has been has, has been created. Again, the poor own this country. We're talking on public resources. So when it comes to public resources, no one is inferior mm. because we own them together. So my Lamba Kaviki child there, mm. sitting on top of the copper, should not feel inferior when talking about the copper, because copper yakwe. You see, those people in the Muchinga own, that poor child in the Muchinga owns the Mukula. You see? So it is a, a situation in which we should uh, just accept and understand that there is no inferiority when it comes to public resources. Uh, Kasongo Nchimunya uh, uh, comes with a question. Do you agree that public institutions that must offer some checks and balances on inequality are colluding with the perpetrators of the vice? Yes, that will be President Lungu's legacy. President Lungu's great legacy will be the destruction of all the institutions that offer checks and balances. So whether it's parliament, whether it is the anti-corruption commission, you see the, the, the president speaks out against them, but as you, you um, countries are saved by sites of sanity. What has happened now is that all sites of sanity and all sites of independence are destroyed. They, they, you know, in this country, if you if you are in government or in an institution, if you think independently, if you ask questions, if you are accountable, if you want the public interest, you will pay the price. So, what you 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 will be uh, promoted, you will be praised if you are a thug, if you are a, a psychophant, if you dance for the presidency, if you. So there's a big problem. And for example, let's take the judiciary. We've never been in a situation in which the judiciary is so untrusted. Never. Mm. You see, so if the judiciary is untrusted, and it's almost impossible to know whether or not it is fair. But when you reach a situation like this, then inequality thrives. Nika Dita Piwa says, how can we get our power back from politicians? if organs that belong to the same government, such as the police department, but they are 
but about me kuri but about me i've been robbed of their work how can we get our power back from politicians if organs that belong to the same government such as the police department but about me kuri have been robbed of their work the police were beaten by jj who are accused of uh, well, jj is accused of beating that's what this guy is talking about so again it's about institutions okay it's about institutions one of the worst things that has happened under this government is the weakening of institutions you know you know the police in zambia whatever you say about them had this dignity about them now the, now they look wet a, a mm. guy that can go in and beat them, then go go and have a, a, a parade in, in in his hometown the zambians i think in, in again i'll say if you are sitting in a car and this car is going off the cliff, and you put your hands and say, Katwishi, Katwishi, the car will go off the cliff with you. This country is going off the cliff. We as citizens must ask ourselves, are we going to be fearful? Are we going to just watch it? What are we going to do together as a collective? And our biggest problem is simple public resources, public resources going into people's pockets. If it was just about dictatorship, shrinking space, this is things we talk about, but the people could eat, the people could go to school, the people could go to clinics. It would be a different thing. But now it's impoverishing the people, destroying their services, and then also destroying their democracy. Zambia, I, I think I will decide how they, what they're going to do about this. I, I always ask people that when it comes to inequality, how safe would you feel if you are the only house or family that is eating in the in the neighborhood when the whole neighborhood is hungry? How safe would you feel when you're the only one with food? How safe would your child be if you're the only one who's sending your child with food packed in their bag and they are going to sit in the classroom with kids that are starving? Do you think your child would be safe? So I always ask people that question. Uh, Christian Musenga says, Laura, meet him. Laura, madam, what Zambia would you want to see in the next 10 years beyond? An eco Zambia. Like for me, equality is a big thing. A, a more eco Zambia. A Zambia where our resources are used to lift the poorest among us. I always say, if you lift, the poor, you lift the whole country. If you lift the bottom, you lift the whole country. So I would like schools that are, are improving. We will not improve immediately, but like they say uh, in, in, uh, um, in, in one of the courses I went to, tomorrow must be better than yesterday. Simply small gains. This mm. situation in which we are either marking time or going backwards is extremely depressing. Small gains. Small gains in health, small gains in education, small gains. Over time, if every year we are improving, 10 years will say, my God, look from where we've come. But now we are saying we can't believe how far back we've gone. And that is very depressing. So Super Ken, Super Ken says, Laura, you are a genius, my sister. I wish this broadcast was on national radio so that the wider audience can get to learn this. Uh, somebody's <laughs> being kind. <laughs> thank you. I, I'm not sure about genius, but hey, thank you. <laughs> yes. So yes, the, the the original idea, Super Ken, the original idea for this program is that uh, these conversations can be taken, can be held, can be moved or be broadcasted on community radio stations so we can have as many people participating in these discussions of inequality. Because at the end of the day, this discussion is a people's discussion and I am personally doing everything possible to move this discussion just from not just uh to move it from online platforms like this into uh community radio stations and however uh or whatever platform is is is, is possible apart from where we are and uh we keep hoping and praying that we we'll get there one day so madam laura i think uh we've clocked our time what would be your call to action what is it that you would speak to the people that you would like them to do tomorrow when they wake up? Do not accept inequality. 
there is no inequality, an equal uh, country that is a peaceful country. Uh, the, uh, the character Zambia, CCJP says, if you want peace, work for justice. If you want peace, work for justice. The way we are, the situation that has been described in Kanyama, where junkies are coming after ordinary people going to work, is the way the whole country is going to be. Like you said, Pilato, you can't be the only person eating. So let's not think, because I am fine, things will be fine. Let's look out for our poor, lift them in small gains through the services and through the money that they own, that God gave them. I've just seen a very interesting question. Uh, I would like you to respond to it, then we can say goodbye. Sure. So this one is coming from McDonald Nyanga Mayara. To what extent can people go to teach politicians who is boss, if not through the ballot? Seems people's voices have been failing, falling on deaf ears. How do people emancipate themselves from such inequalities? Are you calling for some levels of radicalism? If if thinking that the uh, and expecting that the poor should have be a basic level of education, basic water, basic education is radicalism. Yes, then yes, I'm calling for radicalism. <laughs> and yes, our final um, power is the vote. It's always been in a democracy. So we must register to vote and we must vote. But in voting, let's not vote for people. Let's vote for ourselves. Let's vote for what we think. Which, you see, if people come to us and lie to us and we give them the vote, that is the problem. The people we vote for, we must be able to hold them to account in between the vote because it's in between the votes that the nonsense happens. Right now, all of them are going, hey, oh, China, tailoring school. They've suddenly remembered the, the issues. They will do it until 2021. We know it. So what we need to to do is in 2021 let's vote for what happened in 2017 not what happened what's not what is happening now mm. but above all yes we have to be radical about poverty we have to be radical about inequality these people who are being downtrodden are rich people they were born in a rich country their money is being stolen their futures are being stolen and that should never be accepted Thank you very much, Madam Laura. Thank you for uh, joining us. And obviously, as usual, very inspirational and obviously speaking from the heart. And thank you very much for everybody that has been watching us uh, from YouTube, from uh, Periscope, from Twitter, from Facebook, whatever platform you've been watching us from. Thank you very much. And we are back on Monday. And it's very interesting that one of the people that I plan to speak to uh, is a former junkie. <laughs> so this is a guy that had uh, abused drugs and alcohol, and they were almost becoming, you know, uh, useless. But then they something happened, some magic happened, and then they are reformed and they are back, and they would like to speak to us about how drug abuse could damage young people and, in the end, uh, affect the country. So thank you very much, Madam Laura, and uh, thank you very much, everybody.